Thank you, Dr. Satyan, and thank you to Sipla and to the AIOS and Lalit Verma for giving this opportunity to share some of the cases of non-response. And uh, that would be, so we have got, this is a whole presentation is just a few cases and uh, there will be some, I'm going to skip over things which have already been talked in extensive time. So the first case is a 60 year old male who reports with complaints of heaviness, strain in dim light, has a family history of glaucoma. Some years back, he had an episode of ischemic heart disease and arrhythmia, and he's on treatment for that. Vision is 6 by 6, N6, anterior segments normal, but IOP is on Goldman Applination 28 in right and 35 in the left. Gonioscopy showed appositional closure with left eye showing some sinicias in two quadrants. So this is the quickly, I'm just sharing the disc appearance as well as the uh, OCT image, which shows in the left eye, there is a superior nasal, superior nerve fiber layer defect and which is represented with an inferior field defect. So as we always do, both eyes, YAG PI was done and right eye after the PI, there was a good opening, but left eye, the opening was not that good because, and there were sinicia present, which we had already seen. So because of the residual pressure, uh, it was already started on a prostaglandin analog with which the right eye pressure came in the range between 14 to 17 and the left eye came to a range of 24 to 28, which obviously we were not uh, very happy with the left eye pressure level on a single drug. Therefore, uh, we wanted to add something, but because the patient has arrhythmia in the past, we did not want to use a beta blocker. So the preference was given to additional of dorsolamide with which the left eye uh, pressure came a little bit, responded a bit, but still it is not sufficient. It was fluctuating between 20 and 25. Brimonidine was briefly tried, but in a day or two only patient was not uh, happy with the response. So now uh, this is a patient who has got a typical angle closure, left eye more than right eye. And you've already done one iridotomy, which has shown a response, but it's not sufficient. So now what are your treatment options? Because obviously this is not a patient who is doing very well with standard medical therapy, at least in the left eye. So the first option is addition of pilocarpine. Now pilocarpine is a drug which is not commonly used uh, because of its intolerance issues. But uh, it is useful and uh, generally in a lot of cases where I've used it, I prefer to use it in a combination, a fixed drug combination of uh, pilocarpine with timolol because it seems to be much better tolerated. However, in this case, we can't use timolol. So you may want to give a trial of pilocarpine alone. And since the patient is 60, you know, younger patients and myopes, you would like to avoid pilocarpine. But in this case, we can try pilocarpine. And now we have a new kid on the block which is the new group of drugs of ROC2 inhibitors. And I have some limited experience with these drugs. And I think Ripasudil is one of the drugs which I probably would consider trying. Other options which are there in before us is, you know, the very uh, extensive reports were there about clear lens extraction in angle closure patients as the primary treatment. Well, uh, we have seen the eagle, the study, but we are not yet very convinced of doing it in all patients. But here is a situation, 60-year-old patient who is already having some amount of angle closure and our IPI is not able to restore the angle, nor is the pressure control. Is there a role for doing an extraction of the lens is the question which a lot of people would like to ask. And yes, there are people who would probably think of that as one clear solution, but I would not be in favor in this condition because there is already sinicia present, which indicates that the typical meshwork has already taken some amount of damage and uh, removing the lens probably is not going to give us what we want. Laser iridoplasty is one more additional procedure which may be tried. And I know Dr. Harsh, who is on the panel, is on the panel here, is having extensive experience with this procedure, and probably in the panel we can discuss this. But I have limited experience and seen it work in some situations, but usually in patients who don't have sinicia present. So I would say the best option in my hands would be to consider this patient for a trabeculectomy with the phytomycin C, as the patient doesn't have any other problem with that. Now, this is the second patient who is a 68-year-old male, again, having a history of asthma, presented with a right eye pressure of 23 and left eye pressure of 27 on 
femoral OD. So you have a patient of asthma and you are not going to usually use uh, Timolol in this patient. Pachymetry 510, left eye 522, angles open and here is the situation where the visual field is there, nasal defect with an inferior nerve fiber layer defect and this has a deeper inferior nerve fiber layer defect with a larger superior defect and you would like a target intraocular pressure of right eye 17 to 20 and the left eye 14 to 17. Here, as I said earlier, we have to stop the timolol because it is contraindicated in a patient with uh, asthma and therefore we opted for prostaglandin that is latanoprost and obviously we would prefer to start with the monotherapy. So right eye with the monotherapy of latanoprost, we got right eye pressure 16 and left eye pressure of 18. Now, this is not still reaching what targets we would like to achieve. So what are the options? The options as pointed out earlier by earlier speakers in this situation, you would have to add either a carbonic anhydrase or a brimonidine to the left eye. Or you have the other option of switching to another prostaglandin analog. At this point, I would like to make it well understood that when you have a not adequate response or a poor response with one prostaglandin, it makes scientific sense to switch to another prostaglandin. And there is likelihood that another prostaglandin would give you the desired outcome where one could not. So I am in favor of actually trying to see if one of the other prostaglandins other than latanoprost would be able to give us the result rather than going for multi-drug therapy in this kind of a scenario because you just want a little more reduction in pressure, maybe two or three points. As some uh, discussion was already there on the laser therapies and as we discussed that almost we are now not doing ALTs but doing SLTs, in an open angle patient, getting 20% reduction further with an SLT is a very possible solution. And I would say in this scenario, where the patient has asthma and you are started a medical treatment, which has not been a long time, treating with SLT may be a very good option. And you would probably get the result you desire. Of course, there are options of doing non-penetrating glaucoma surgery and other angle surgeries such as a trabectome or implants in the angle. And all these are usually done when you combine surgeries with cataract surgery and not done as standalone procedures. The gold standard, however, of surgical procedures is a trabeculectomy with mitomycin. Some people like to use an express shunt, but I would still say when surgical option is desired, I would select a trabeculectomy with mitomycin over everything else. The third is an interesting patient is a 16-year-old boy referred for uncontrolled IOP in the right eye with all the medications. The vision shows right eye already reduced 6-12 left eye with correction is six by six. On the maximal treatment, which includes four group of drugs, the pressure in the right eye is still 28 and left eye is 13. The right eye gonioscopy shows a lot of pigmentation. However, no sinicae are seen. Left eye is open with average pigmentation. Visual fields in the right eye showed a very narrow central field only on the 10 dash. However, the left eye did show some superior accurate defect. The patient was of the patient, which is the most important data I would like to share. And as you can see, on the superior side, you have an ectatic uh, lesion in the sclera with the scleral thinning. And you cannot probably think of doing a trabeculectomy at that location. So what is and what about the use of mitomycin? Because a young 16-year-old with a past history of uveitis. So you cannot probably do any trabeculectomy without the anti-scarring uh, addition. So what would you like to use? Because I would not be comfortable using mitomycin in this case. So what are your options? If you do a trabeculectomy, what about the antifibrotics? I would not be in a comfortable position to use. One option where the antifibrotic part can be taken care with an ologen implant is one option which we can consider and to share with you that is exactly what I did and the patient responded beautifully to ologen implant and he is he, this surgery was done about seven years ago and he's still very well controlled in that eye. The other option which I contemplated is putting an amid valve as primary 
because he has had past history of uveitis i was worried that all trabeculectomies will have a longer a shorter expectancy of survival because of recurrent uveitis and we didn't know but in such a young patient putting an amadwal directly which is known to over time have an impact on the endothelial cells was not a easy decision second thing putting the amadwal in that location where sclera is thin is also not a good idea so i would have to actually put a scleral graft and then put the amadwal so this uh, i avoided but i would be happy to do it if it the first surgery fails coming to the next case is a 58 year old male who did complain of blurred vision but the vision was 6 by 6 and 6 with a myopic of minus 7 correction both eyes anterior segments were normal right eye pressure was 17 left eye pressure was 15 tachymetry was average gonioscopy did show an open angle i will show you the disc and feel shortly we did a diurnal variation for this patient and we did not find any reading about 21 he was on systemic hypertensive medication with a ace inhibitor in the morning and quite well controlled history did not reveal any steroid use trauma past history of shock and he did not have any diabetes Hyper- there was no significant family history of glaucoma and this is the picture of his optic nerve which clearly shows the right eye to be much more affected than the left but both are showing significant damage and the right eye on the first visual field itself showed very advanced damage the left eye also showed severe damage and this patient was initiated because it was diagnosed as a normal tension kind of glaucoma and was initiated on Uh, prostaglandin therapy with which he responded and the pressure came down uh, at least 3 4 points to 12 and 13 he was kept under observation and repeat fields he was very compliant with follow ups and therefore i assumed quite compliant with the medical therapy itself but as time went the right eye did show consistently some amount of progressive damage left eye continued to do well so we enhanced the right eye the therapy with darzalamide and bramonidine the left eye continued with prostaglandin but as per the previous discussion we still added darzalamide there because of the concept of the dysregulation of uh, vascular flow which was assumed because we, we were not able to show anything on the flow tests the right iop showed fluctuations sometimes going up to 19 the left eye iops were much stable and the fluctuations were not much going up to 14 therefore we then decided to do a mitomycin trabeculectomy in the right eye after the trabeculectomy also consistently over the next 3 years he did show progressive damage and this is only on the 24-2 but also on the 10-2 which was also done consistently there is evidence of some slow progression which is going on and as shown by other speakers earlier this does happen sometimes and iops were quite stable in the left eye between 10 and 14 right eye even after the trabeculectomy we still gave him prostaglandin and dorsolamide and maintained his pressure sometimes to single digits some maximum going to 13 but still if he is showing progression what are we going to do we did the carotid dopplers with whatever technology we had as dr murli pointed out there are more skillful tests and skillful operators who can get us more data but whatever we could we got was not contributory the bp halter was also not con- uh, conclusive we did the uh, sleep apnea test at home which showed the indice to be somewhere around 14 and that is just just a little bit here or there not really showing any sure defect the mri showed optic nerve atrophy which very commonly is seen especially in the right eye but did not add anything further so this is one of the cases where we are really at the end of our brains to do what we can do so give him curcumin proenzyme q10 vitamin b12 ct choline one important aspect which came into picture in this particular patient after going into a lot of history was that he always preferred to sleep laterally in the right side only and there i did find some references that this could be a reason of continuous progression on one side and we corrected that and he did stabilize in the last 3 years his right eye has been now stable this is the fifth case of a 64 year old male 
who again reported for routine eye examination, well controlled diabetes, but non hypertensive. Vision was 6 by 6 and 6, but IOPs were high, right eye 26 and left eye 24 with open angles. The disc and the fields were as shown. The right eye showed a defect which was superior and very close to fixation, the sign of defects which we commonly see in uh, normal tension glaucomas and an optic nerve anomalies. The left eye showed a little bit of a cluster in the nasal field. Now here is the optic disc, the right eye optic disc clearly showing a tilted optic disc with a large area of temporal crescent. And we don't know whether this is an optic disc anomaly producing this defect, but as the pressures were high, we have to treat. The left eye also is a bit tilted, but definitely much less than seen in the right eye. So we started initial medical therapy with latanoprost. But this was a real surprise patient reports back in 15 days with very, very uncomfortable sensation of foreign bodies, redness, and even fluctuating vision. And this is what we found on examination is the lot of uh, punctate keratopathy and uh, the posterior blepharitis be acting up over here. So this is a patient who is definitely with the either because of the drug or because of the preservative. And there must have been a little dry eyes uh, initially, which I had missed because posterior blepharitis, sometimes you don't see that carefully and it is missed and it got exacerbated with the medication. So what are the options you would have in treating such a patient and getting out of this situation? Of course, we have now in the last two or three years, a lot of preservative free or alternative preservative medications, including totally preservative free medications and lubricants. So I would definitely take up on this besides the treatment of the blepharitis also has to be done, keeping in mind that steroid cream should not be used or used very sparingly. The second option, as we had discussed earlier, is to do a SLT. This is a treatment naive patient with early glaucoma of, however, since the right eye uh, shows a field defect which is close to fixation. He should be classified a little more than just mild, but definitely he should respond very well to SLT because this falls in the category of the best responders to SLT treatment. So I would say using SLT would take away from all medical treatment. Then there is the option of doing a non-penetrating glaucoma surgery, which also is likely to give good results in this patient. And however, if everything that would be a little far call to do a trabeculectomy, we would generally like to keep this after we have observed the patient for some time and see how he responds to our non-surgical interventions first. So thank you very much for uh, your time and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Man.